What is going on, everybody? Tim from Tierfon Orbital. So you thought that that grip in the SK that I did previously was big. Wait till you see the absolute gargantuan size of this hilt. This hilt is by far the girthiest hilt I have ever installed on. Uh, so yeah, this is a big hilt. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, where this hilt came from. I also want to talk about the install a little bit, obviously, and then we'll do a quick demo uh, how, I, how we always do, right? So this is a custom one-off hilt that was done by Jawa's Junkyard uh, for a client. The client really wanted a, a hilt uh, based off of the Arbiter hilt from Jedi Academy. Leon, from who, Leon, who's the owner and operator of Jawa's Junkyard, had this hilt specifically made for this client. Um, this hilt came to me already installed. Uh, it was already installed with a Profi and a chassis. However, the client was not happy with the Profi uh, install and he wanted a CFX. So uh, I took the project on to completely overhaul the chassis and make it a CFX build, right? Um, so, which honestly, this is the first time that I've done a CFX install that was an absolute pleasure. The entirety of this install was completely seamless for me, which has not happened with CFX builds to this date. So that tells me one of two things. Either I just got really lucky this time, or I might be getting a little bit better with my CFX installs. Again, the wiring is not the problem. Um, pad placement's a little tricky on the CFX. I feel like like post config and post install is where I struggle. Like, you know, uh, finalizing the config, finalizing all the gestures and the fonts. Uh, you know, with this one, I had, <laughs> I had trouble figuring out how to enable single switch. Um, I don't understand why. So for me, if I have any questions about Profi, I can go to the manual and find it really easily. Um, CFX has an absolutely robust manual. I, I mean, it's almost too much information to comb through. I could not find the single switch option anywhere in the manual. Uh, I did find some stuff on Reddit. However, it wasn't until I actually plugged the hilt into uh, the Crystal FX or the Crystal Focus app uh, that I was able to, <laughs> to select single switch. Uh, but yeah, just really, uh, you know, strange stuff like that that I find is just always easier on Profi. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more difficult with CFX. So you've got to dig around a little bit, especially if you're not familiar uh, with, with the config process for CFX. So anyhow... So yeah, this is the, it's a big hilt. Uh, I had plenty of room on the grip uh, of this hilt to put whatever I wanted on the chassis. Uh, it's a little bit of a unique chassis setup, so I wanna talk about that a little bit. I wanna talk about how to use it, and then obviously we'll put a, a blade in it and we'll do a demo, right? So let's come into Fusion really quick. This is the chassis that I did for this install. Look at the greeblies on this thing. There's greeblies under greeblies. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. I got to, you know, go ham. Uh, I've got a bunch of this stuff from my Greebly library that I've just uh, put in here. I've done some custom tube work. Some of these tubes are actually raised. This is the first time I've been able to really do this uh, because I was able to make things so big, right? Uh, I did, you know, some circular stuff up here. Some weird circular designs around the kill switch. But yeah, just plenty of room to put Greeblies on here. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. 31 millimeter speaker, fully enclosed in this guy. I had plenty of room. I think I had 34 and a half millimeters. Yeah, 34 and a half mils uh, on this chassis. It was a big boy, right? We've got plenty of room for a, an OLED. So the client did request Bluetooth for this. So I figured since I have the room, why not go all out? So we've got an OLED screen here. Uh, this channel is where I slide the OLED in um, and bring my leads up through this wire management channel. The Bluetooth module has its own tray as well. It sits in here. CFX sits in this area. It does slide underneath this lip. If you do need to get at the USB slot, uh, there's plenty of room to slide that out if need be. Uh, around the other side, pay no mind to all of this. this. These are just symbols, they don't spell anything. I've been wanting to try uh, to put text <laughs> in a battery tray before. 
Uh, I just figured, why not? There's plenty of room in this. I just wanted to give it a try. So I put that in the battery tray. And that's it. We do have a kill switch around front as I try to not make you dizzy as, as I fling this chassis around. Kill switch is here, and this is where my leads and the upper part of the brass crystal chamber module marries into the rest of the hilt. And that's it, right? So speaking of that brass crystal chamber, let's come up top and take a look at this thing. So here is the chassis. This chassis is almost as big as a regular hilt. It's absolutely massive. So I had plenty of room uh, to get crazy with Greebly work. So let's talk about that brass crystal chamber first. So this, the previous install was already affixed to this brass, upper brass section. So I had to remove that. This is a really, really nicely machined uh, brass upper section as well. This crystal, not only is this the, the largest hilt I've ever installed on, this crystal is the largest crystal I've ever seen in a build. This crystal is almost the size of a golf ball. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, and why wouldn't you put a crystal that size in here? There's plenty of room to do so, right? And, and like, it's obscenely large. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is the chassis. I did also forget to mention there are, there's a 2020 NeoPixel strip here uh, that serves as some shine through through these red LED lenses. Uh, this was also a request by the client, right? But Gravely's everywhere. Here's our OLED screen. Bluetooth modules down in there. I'm really happy with how that act, that came out actually. Um, so yeah, let's talk about how to use it. Okay, so flat part of your battery is the negative side. Spring side is your negative on the chassis. Slide your battery in. Hit your kill switch. There's those onboard Neos. There's that OLED. I believe I've got twist to activate set up on this front. Yep. And there's that giant crystal. So it's one self-contained chassis. Everything is here, you know, everything lights up when it is outside of the hilt, right? So once you get your battery in, let's talk about putting it in the hilt. Let's talk about the hilt itself first though. Look at this thing. I mean, it probably looks like a regular size hilt in my giant gorilla hands. This thing is absolutely, it's obscenely huge. I mean, this thing is massive. Massive hilt, right? Really, really nicely done. Really, really nicely made. Uh, I think this is the Jedi Academy logo back here. Uh, really, really cool shroud. I mean, it's a really, really nice hilt. Um, you know, just a little on the big side, that's all, right? So, take note, uh, this is to the client. I'm sure you already know uh, about how this chassis uh, affixes to the inside of the hilt, right? There is a very, very small M2 screw in this area. This is what helps the chassis to stay in place. So once you have your battery in, uh, this is a tight fit for that brass crystal chamber module. Once you get everything passed, you want to slide it up and line up that hole. Okay. Now, here is the switch assembly for this install or for this build there's a oh, there it goes don't lose that so this is like an m2 screw i almost think that this is like a glasses um like for a glasses arms glasses arms you know these things on your glasses i think that's what this is uh but you don't want to strip this screw if you strip this screw while it is in the hilt you will not be able to get the chassis out so hand tighten it, make sure it's secure, and then you're good to go, okay? The pommel also helps secure uh, the chassis in place, okay? And that's it. So let's come down to the bottom. Yeah, this thing is absolutely massive. Really, really cool looking hilt though. There's that crystal. You do get some shine through in that lens there when it's white. Uh, and there's those two onboard LED, or, uh, le LED lenses. So let's put a blade in it. One of the things I noticed about this hilt as well was there's no blade retention screw. Uh, there is a Phillips head screw here, but this does not penetrate all of the way into the inside of the hilt. So it's, it's probably just decorative. Okay, so I added a set screw around, along the side here. Get your blade in, make sure it's resting on those PCB pins and tighten that set screw and you're ready to go. 
So uh, you'll notice that this is short. It's because this is such a long blade for this demo. Uh, but that can be edited in the config if you see fit. If, if the client, if you've got a blade that's 36 inches, you might need to change that in the config. Really, really cool. Let's see what else we put on here. Sound bank selection. You're in fire. So I just set it up with my stock CFX config. Um, it's got the majority of you know the fonts that are offered for free, um, and I also put on some other like separate free fonts from like Grayscale and all that on there already. But other than that, that's it, right? Just a super unique hilt. Um, it was an absolute pleasure doing this one because I had so much room. So yeah, yeah, really liked it. So. To the client, thank you very much for trusting me with your build. To the viewers, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. If anyone has any questions, please don't be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always. Thanks for watching, everybody.